Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So Game of Thrones and Entertainment Weekly teamed up to drop some fantastical photos for the new season of Game of Thrones Season 8. Magazine covers and photos, and I only want to talk about one. Game of Thrones Twitter is actually where it's at. Like, it's pretty big and active, and some of the most exclusive finds are posted on there. So I'm on Twitter, and Maddie, I'm going to link her Instagram and her Twitter handles below. So I've actually been on a panel with her on Joe Magician's channel a while back. So we're actually planning on doing a podcast on this subject, but shout out to Maddie for catching this because I did not catch this. And if you look closely at the cover of Entertainment Weekly, the one with the Night King is a close up of him. Look at his eyes. His eyes look crazy, but do you notice anything different than usual? Do you notice anything about his eyes? His pupils are actually a seven-pointed star. So in Game of Thrones, what does the seven-pointed star represent? The faith of the seven, the religion of the Andals. What could all of this mean? Well, first, it could mean nothing at all. That, like, it could mean nothing. But what are the odds? that it means nothing. I think it means something. I think his eyes were specifically changed for a reason. So there are two things it could mean. The first thing it could mean is that we finally have the huge clue pointing towards who the Night King actually is. Well, I won't hold you. The Night King could likely be a character from the books from ancient legend and songs named Simeon Star Eyes. Simeon Star Eyes was a knight from the Age of Heroes, even though knights didn't technically exist until after the arrival of the Andals. There was a knight once who couldn't see, Bran said stubbornly as Sir Roderick went on below. Old Nan told me about him. He had a long staff with blades at both ends and he could spin it in his hands and chop two men at once. Simeon Star Eyes, Lewin said as he marked numbers in a book. When he lost his eyes, he put star sapphires in the empty sockets, or so the singers claim. Bran, that is only a story, like the tales of Florian the Fool, a fable from the Age of Heroes. You must put these dreams aside. They will only break your heart. Simeon's star eyes isn't mentioned much in the saga. He's only mentioned nine times in all the works of George R.R. R. Martin. It doesn't seem like a lot of mentions, but he is at least mentioned once in every book so far in the series. He's mentioned in A Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Swords, A Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons. He's also mentioned in The Tales of Duncan Egg and The World of Ice and Fire. So he is at least mentioned in every damn book. Also, the times he's mentioned, two of the times have to do directly with the White Walkers. And one of the other times he's mentioned, it has to do with the Night Fort. And the Night Fort is where the Night's King, the 13th Lord Commander, reigned. The other times he's mentioned, he's mentioned along with Serwin of the Mirror Shield and talks about how Simeon Star Eyes is in the songs. But I want to focus on two quotes in general. Let's look at the first one. The first one has to do with the Night Fort. The Night Fort had figured in some of Old Nan's scariest stories. It was here that Night's King had reigned before his name was wiped from the memory of man. This was where the Rat Cook had served the Andal King his prince and bacon pie, where the 79 Sentinels stood their watch, where brave young Danny Flint had been raped and murdered. This was the castle where King Sherrod had called down his curse on the Andals of old, where the Prentice boys had faced that thing that came in the night, where blind Simeon star eyes had seen the hellhounds fighting, Mad Axe had once walked these yards and climbed these towers, butchering his brothers in the dark. All that had happened hundreds and thousands of years ago, to be sure, and some maybe never happened at all. Maester Lewin always said that old man's stories shouldn't be swallowed whole. Okay, so Simeon Star Eyes was at the Night Fort, where he saw two hellhounds fighting. The popular belief is that the hellhounds actually represent two direwolves, and the two direwolves are actually symbolic for two Starks. The Night's King and the King in the North, his brother that brought him down. 
also Night's King and Brandon the Breaker. All of this is well and good, but how could a blind man see two hellhounds fighting? How can a blind man see? Well, maybe he wasn't actually blind and his eyes were really just icy blue like stars. They weren't sapphires at all. They were blue like stars. And that's why he has the name Simeon Star Eyes. Maybe Night's King and Simeon Star Eyes are the same person. I can't recall how many times exactly that the White Walkers and Whites are referred to as having star eyes in the books. Let me just read you a few. The hooded man lifted his pale moon face, and John slashed at it without hesitation. The sword laid the intruder open to the bone, taking off half his nose and opening a gash cheek to cheek under those eyes. Eyes. Eyes like blue stars burning. That's one quote. Here's another. What color are their eyes? He asked her. Blue. As bright as blue stars and as cold. She has seen them, he thought. Craster lied. Even when we talk about the Night's Queen, it quotes her as having blue star eyes. A woman was his downfall. A woman glimpsed from atop the wall, with skin as white as the moon and eyes like blue stars. So you see, there's a lot of these star eye references. Then we get this new picture of the Night King with star eyes, and we have a character named Simeon Star Eyes that was at the Night Fort. So it's like, is this all a coincidence? Another thing about Simeon Star Eyes is that Bran said that he had a long staff with blades at both ends of it, and the White Walkers use a very similar weapon, although it is made of ice. Now, Simeon Star Eyes could be the Night's King, the 13th Lord Commander. They could be the same person. Assuming Night's King and Night King are the same person, let's say that the cave evidence from Season 7 shows the Night King as an older bearded man. And this older bearded man is the original Night's King, the 13th Lord Commander. It is said that he gave his soul and his seed to the Night's Queen. They reigned for 14 years. In those 14 years, what if they had a son? Maybe they didn't even have one son, but they had two sons. And what if the names of their children are Simeon Star Eyes and Serwin of the Mirror Shield? Simeon and Serwin sound like brotherly names. It sounds like that could be possible, like they could be. This is me just wondering if this is plausible, but let's go to what Sam tells John. The oldest histories we have were written after the Andals came to Westeros. The first men only left us runes on rocks. So everything we think we know about the Age of Heroes and the Dawn Age and the Long Night comes from accounts set down by Septons thousands of years later. There are archmaesters at the Citadel who question all of it. Those old histories are full of kings who reigned for hundreds of years and knights riding around a thousand years before there were knights. You know the tales, Brandon the Builder, Simeon Star Eyes, Knight's King. We say that you're the 998th Lord Commander of the Knight's Watch, but the oldest list I found shows 674 commanders. Simeon Star Eyes is mentioned again, alongside Brandon the Builder, and guess who? Night's King. But the point of this quote is to move on to the second thing the Night King having star eyes could mean. It is from this quote that we learn that the timeline is not accurate. I have done a lot of work on this timeline previously and my belief is that it isn't accurate and I'll link those videos above in case you want to check those out. So the Night King having a seven pointed star in his eyes could have some correlation with the Andals. Now, the widely accepted history is that the Andals came to Westeros after the Long Night, but before the Valerians. The Valerian Tide or Conquest of Essos allegedly chased the Andals out of Andalos, and that's what the histories say. But the histories also say that it was the Andals that brought iron with them to Westeros or steel, which is made from iron. An old man says this. In that darkness, the others came for the first time, she said as her needles went click click. They were cold things, dead things that hated iron and fire and the touch of the sun and every creature with hot blood in its veins. 
They swept over holdfasts and cities and kingdoms, felled heroes and armies by the score, riding their pale dead horses and leading a host of the slain. So Old Nan says that the others hated iron and fire. But according to the histories, iron came to Westeros, or at least making iron into steel, came to Westeros with the Andals. There is talk of dragon steel before steel and iron, and, and even dragons allegedly existed in Westeros at this time before the Valerians conquered Westeros. Again, this could mean nothing. In the World of Ice and Fire app, it says that the pact between the children and the first men was broken due to the arrival of the Andals. The histories say that the pact was formed pre-Long Night. I mean, the histories are so jumbled up, it's like it's hard to know what to believe. But what if the Andals' arrival broke whatever hold the children had on the White Walkers? I know, it sounds crazy, but think about it. Think about the legend of Azor Ahai. We would be talking about the first Azor Ahai, whoever he is. When the Red Star bleeds, Azor Ahai shall be reborn amidst salt and smoke waking dragons from stone. Well, the Faith of the Seven is represented by a seven-pointed star. The warriors of the Andals literally carve seven-pointed stars into their bodies and these stars bleed. Made zealous by conflict and flight, the warriors of the Andals carved the seven-pointed star upon their bodies and swore by their blood and the seven not to rest until they had honed the kingdoms from the sunset lands. Yeah, the Andal star is literally a bleeding star. And one of the seven gods of the faith of the seven is the stranger. The stranger is neither male nor female, yet both at the same time. He is the outcast, the wanderer from far places, less and more than human, unknown and unknowable. His face is the face of death. He leads the newly deceased to the other world. I'm just saying, the stranger is sounding real Night King-ish. It's like all these people are worshiping all these fucked up religions that are actually, they're actually worshiping the Night King. But what would this all mean? Like, does this shit mean anything to you? To me, like big picture, if all this Andal stuff is true, it would mean that the Andals not only caused the long night by breaking the pact between children and men, but it also would mean that they rewrote history to erase the White Walkers because they never fully beat them. We have the Andal religion completely replacing the old gods in Westeros. The Andals are cutting down and burning down all the weirwoods they could, except for the North. The Andals never took the North. The only place in the North that doesn't keep the old gods is White Harbor. The Andal religion made everyone forget, but the North remembers. So I will be going over more of these ideas in depth and more explored on a podcast coming up with Maddie and some other surprise guests. But I want to know what you think about all this. Does it mean anything? What does it mean to you? I, let me know because I'm like, I'm really hype about this. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.